Hello, we're going to talk a little bit about creating uh, dynamic elements with JavaScript. Uh, we're going to be utilizing the document uh, query selector to grab items in the DOM to append children so that we can add additional uh, elements to our rendered page dynamically. Uh, we're going to be pulling from a data set that's defined with um, an array of JavaScript objects and then dynamically adding event listeners uh, to certain pieces of our new table. Um, so to start off with, let's just look at our structure a little bit here. Uh, we have a uh, div with ID of wrapper, and that wrapper is going to be what, what's going to hold our table. Uh, we also have a um, then a JavaScript. So from an HTML standpoint, that's it. And we can look at our DOM and see that our div with ID wrapper has nothing in it, and then we just have a script block. So with the script block, um, I'm creating an array with column names, and I'll use that in just a little bit. And then I have uh, a data array. So you can see it's an array because it starts with the square braces. And then it's an array of dynamically, or object literals. So each literal has an ID, zero, name, Anya, city, um, whatever, Hjorn Jost. Uh, she is 1,158 years old and is a demon. And then we can look at the next person. They have an ID of one. Uh, name is Giles from London. He's 63 and he's not a demon. Um, so we've created uh, five individuals in our data set. And we're going to use this data set to create a table dynamically that represents um, our Scooby gang here. Uh, so to start off with, um, I've got some code here. I'm going to uncomment, and we have uh, we're going to create the table. So if we look at this, and uh, what this code is going to do is it's going to create a table element. It's going to add some classes to it. So we're going to add Scooby Gang and listing to that table, and then we're going to append a T head or a table header um, element to our table. Um, once we have that, we're going to use our table query selector from within the table so that when you use a query selector from an element, basically it's only going to search within the scope of that element, within that element's children to um, find something that matches that query. Uh, it can be pretty useful. So once we find it, um, with JavaScript we can chain some functions. So we're going to find that element, the T head, and then we're going to go into append another child being a row. Um, this row is going to contain our header information, so the titles, the column headers for each column. And I'm going to go based on our column length, which is uh, going to be three. We can look up and see our columns up there. Um, so for each column, I'm going to create a cell. I'm going to set the content of that cell to the value in the array. So columns um, index, and then um, I'm going to append that cell to the row that is our header. Um, and then at the end of that, once I've created our table and our header, we're going to find the wrapper, the div wrapper. Uh, and append our table to that. So it should show up and be a child of our div. So I'm going to save this. We're going to refresh our screen here. When it refreshes, we do get um, columns that have name, birthplace, and age. And if I look at this, I can see we have our div ID wrapper um, with a table class um, with Scooby Gang and listing. It has a T head, it has a row, uh, and each row has the name that we're looking for. Uh, so the first part of our table construction is complete. Uh, once we do that, now we're going to use our data object uh, that's holding the array of object literals. And we're going to create one row for each one of our data objects and populate that table um, with some data about our Scooby gang. So that is just going to be done in a for loop here. Um, I'm keeping our for loops pretty simple. Um, oop, that I hit save already. So um, it refreshed with our data here. Uh, what it's doing again, we're looping through our data and we're going to assign to S the value of the object, so the Scooby gang member. Then we're going to create a row and with that row we can do a couple things. We're going to set the ID 
to the name of the person uh, that's and we're going to lowercase it and just a pin dash row to our person's um, name to, so that we can create a unique ID for each row. Uh, and then for the row, we're going to set a data set um, called person ID. And when we're talking about that data set, what we're talking about is are these attributes. With JavaScript, it has a data set that you can append additional attributes to your HTML element that you may need or want to use programmatically, but that you're not necessarily going to need to display to people. Um, they're not necessarily CSS selectors, um, but it allows you when you grab an element to uh, access certain data that can be helpful to you when you're working with a dynamic application. Um, so we're, we're leveraging our data set here and setting the person ID. And then we also are dyna dynamically creating an ID, a unique ID for each row of our Scooby gang. Um, within the row, we're going to start creating three cells. We have our name cell, city cell, age cell. Um, we're creating those, assigning the content to a different uh, attribute of our data object, um, adding a class, uh, and also setting the person ID on each cell. Uh, you know, I, I'm doing this to show an example of how one might use data set specifically when you're creating a dynamic element. Um, once we were done creating all of our cells, we're going to add those to our row. And then once we're done uh, creating our entire row, we're going to add that back to the table. So we just have a loop that's going through our data set, creating our, our object, and we move on. Um, I have some helper functions here. One is to get the name of the uh, person by their ID so that I can use that data person ID object um, to pass it in and get the person's name uh, with a function. Uh, same thing is I have a function that is Scooby Demon where I pass in the ID of our Scooby gang member and identify, okay, if the person's a demon, I'm going to say, hey, that person's a demon. And if they're not, they're not a demon. So just some helper functions uh, for to use later on. The other function, helper function I have is to log the information about our Scooby gang. And what that's going to do is it's going to take in an action number referencing these event handlers that I've defined here, plus the ID of the person so that I can write out a nice console message about uh, the person uh, represented by the cell or object that the cell or element that we're clicking on. Um, all right, so then I define my event handlers. These are very simple. All they're essentially doing is going to trigger an alert to tell us what is our current target and our target, uh, and then log some information about the um, data object represented by this row. Um, and yeah, so we can see if I break these down that our, um, our elements in our DOM represent exactly what I think they should, um, and we have access to our data model again. All right, so first I'm just going to um, assign a, um, an event handler to certain, um, to certain cells in our table. So I only want uh, the cells of class name to be clickable, to handle something. So I get all of my td.name, see that I've put a class name on, on my cells. Um, and this will go through and pull out all the cells that have class name and put them in a node list here. Once I have that node list, I'm going to loop through it. And for each cell, I'm going to add a click with action one. So now if I click on these, uh, so if I click on Anya, and let's go to our console here. So I'm going to click on Anya. It's going to trigger this and it's going to say action one. Current target is the TD and the target is the TD. I'm going to hit OK and we're going to get a message that action one player is Anya and Anya is a demon. So watch out for her. Um, and I've also, because I've done this dynamically, each one of my um, rows, each one of my name cells in each of my rows has this event listener. So I can hit OK and I get all of the information about each of those rows. The next one that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to assign a row, um, I'm sorry, assign an event handler. Oops. 
I should probably talk about what I'm doing when I'm saying I'm adding an event handler. Um, I'm going to put a listener on the third row by query by constructing a query selector out of dynamic information. So I can put in the uh, Octothorpe here, which is representing the ID CSS selector. I'm going to grab the um, second object in my data set, set it to lowercase, append row, and that is going to map to Willow here. So Willow's row is going to have a special event listener, and her event listener is going to be action two. Um, when I'm assigning an event listener, I just get the element, I say dot add event listener, tell it which event listener that I would like to listen for on this element, and then pass in a function um, that will execute when this listener is triggered, uh, when that event is triggered. Um, and so action one is defined up here, and this is the logic on how that's going to handle it. Um, so yeah, so now that I have another um, event listener set up on this one, if I click on, again, Anya, we're going to see that one event is fired and none others. If I click on her birthplace, nothing happens. Age, same thing. Giles, we're going to see that happen. Uh, if I click on London, nothing. Age, nothing. Now if I click on Willow, I'm going to see that we get that initial one where it says action one current target is the TD and the target is the TD. So if I click OK, another event is being triggered because I'm now triggering the other event that was being um, listened for on Willow's row. Uh, so the second one is saying, okay, the current target for the action two is a TR, but the target is the TD because I'm clicking on that TD as a user. Um, so the current target is representing the object uh, more accurately, it is representing the element that is currently handling the event that was being listened for, the event that was triggered. In this case, the entire row for Willow uh, was set to handle that um, action too. Uh, so that will always fire if you click on anything in that, um, in that row. So I clicked on her name, I clicked on her birthplace, and if we click on her age, again, only the, the row is going to fire, but we're not going to have the name fire. Uh, so in this instance, we can see that, um, that we, there is an element of hierarchy when events are being fired. We can talk, we'll talk about event propagation at a later time. Um, right now, we're just looking at how we can assign them to dynamically generated objects. Um, and then here, I can assign a third one to the table as a whole. Um, so here I'm just going to query selector, ID wrapper, child table, and with that I'm going. You can again chain these functions. So I'm going to add an event listener to the element that was returned. I'm listening for click, and action three is going to um, trigger. So now if I click on um, a row that, that previously didn't have an event listener, we're still going to get two. So first we're going to get action three, current table was target, and that gets. Um, that gets fired. So we see action three is fired. If I click on Buffy's name, action one and action three are also going to be fired. Um, and with Willow now, because technically her name is now going to have three events attached to it. We have an event attached specifically to the name cell. We have an event attached to Willow's row. And we have an event attached to the table containing uh, this data. So if I click on Willow's name, we have that information showing up there. Uh, and finally, we can add one to the, um, to the uh, wrapper. And so now when I'm going to, uh, let's refresh this page. So now if I click on the birthplace, we're going to get that action three because it's on the table and the wrapper, the div. And we're seeing the current target that's handling it is the div, and the target of that is the cell. Uh, so that is a brief uh, description on how we do this. I'll check this code into uh, GitHub for people to access. And uh, thanks for walking through creating dynamic elements and handling events with dynamic uh, objects in HTML.